This is one of my best schools right here. There's these points that come out to make ledges. They're just, oh, that's a big one. What's up, M. Afters? Welcome to day number two of practice. Total change of scenery today. Yesterday we fished the lower end of the lake and um, really liked what I saw actually. Found some fish staged up on ledges, probably five or six groups of fish. A couple of those groups were really big groups of, of fish uh, set up pre-spawn, but they're gonna move a lot. Today, we went way up the river. Uh, not way, but we're at the where the river meets the lake. We're at Lake Point State Park. I kind of wanted to come here because I wanted to see you know, the launching facility and everything. I never like to launch there for the first time, tournament morning, if I can help it. And so that's what we did. Plus, it's really good to find some spots, obviously, around launch. There's gonna be times during this tournament um, where even if I don't find anything up here, I'm gonna be blasting back because I got whatever fish or I'm struggling, I'm doing really good. And I'm just gonna get back here early with an hour or a half hour, or even 10 minutes that I'm gonna wanna fish something here. Plus, um, it's gonna be totally different fishing in this part of the lake. Water's a lot more stained, at least right here anyway. And there's way more shallow grass current type stuff. So yesterday, caught him on a deep crank, jerk bait, had a couple follow the glide that I think I probably could have got to commit on one of my other baits. But up here, it's gonna be a lot more swim jig, frog, chatter bait, stuff like that. Honestly, I'm going to fish all the stuff that I marked up on my map through all my pre-tournament study that looks good. And I'm going to fish today like I plan to fish the entire tournament here. But at the same time in the back of my head, I am trying to eliminate wanting to come up to this part of the lake. So we're gonna do both, <laughs> but um, I'm excited. We got the six cents, we got the Vega frog, we got the whale, we got swim jig, chatter bay, we got everything tied up. It's my shallow water stuff. And I'm gonna kind of tell you how I'm breaking down the lake as we go and get it cold. This is the main river channel right here. We're launching over there, but this is the first spot that definitely a lot of fish could pull up. And I, I looked on the Google Earth image and um, this water's a lot cleaner here because the creek we launch in gets a lot of stained water coming down it. So I'm just gonna kind of blast around in this little pocket here and then we're gonna run further up the river, see if I can find some stagers right here. I think we're gonna see some gators today, cool. That ain't a bass. <laughs> you ever seen one of those, Cole? Snakehead. Me too. I haven't caught one of these in a minute. Or they bite your bait off because they got gnarly teeth. They're supposed to be great eating. Just a snake. Well, my carpet graphic did have good grip until it had snake juice all over it. Gnarly little invasive critters. I don't even know if it's legal to throw them back. Oh well, breaking the law already. Didn't even didn't feel them bite. I just felt them wallering around down there. I was like, the world? <laughs> That's why I fish for stuff that I can see on my screen and I know what species it is. <laughs> Sometimes. I do love this though, so much. Highest mat on a point right here is a good spot for them to stage up on, so. Thought I'd hit it and that happened. I mean, you pretty much can't fish shallow if you got 360, live scope, everything on here in the grass. I didn't even go in there and I got it on there. Jesus, heads up. Oh, is my hummingbird alive? So popped it right there. The place blows. Sp 
Spit it out. Get rid of it. Shake it out. They're small here. We can handle them. <laughs> we can handle them, huh? Grab him. Dude, he'll grab me. I want to pop my rod through there, but I don't want him to bite my rod. There we go. Boom. I think I tailed something. Oh no. We done found him. What's stupid is, I'm like, eh, there ain't fish here. I ain't gonna come here in the tournament. Five days, there'll probably be pigs stacked up right here. Donk, can lock that up. It was like, donk. All my spots last night. Well, we got out of the river, made ourselves a run. Now we're fishing some new stuff. Just pulled up on a point and I'm okay with catching a couple. I just want to keep from other people seeing us here, really. Lock that C10 up, brother. Good. Oh, four and a quarter. They're loaded. I don't know if Red Boat over there can see us or not. Only if they have a camera guy with eagle-like vision. Here comes another one. Get off there, brother. Bigger than I thought he was. Probably over, probably over three. So fat. Look at him up here. Here, let's show these fine folks at home what we're looking at. So we got this creek that kind of comes off the main lake here. This is the type of stuff I've been scanning. So it comes all the way down. There's these points that come out to make ledges. And so these guys are just up on this for whatever reason. It's kind of a rockier one, I think, than the other ones. Let me pan up there. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? You see them loaded. There's fish out off the drop, but those are the ones up there. Those are all up there actively feeding. Let me pan around a little bit here. I'll turn this up too. Let's see them better. So kind of go around. You can see there's probably... 30 or so fish in this area. C10's perfect, it tops out about six, seven feet. God, I just ran into one halfway down. Oh my God. They're just loaded, that's a big one. I think he's got it sideways. He's trying to take it from his buds. All right, time to move. Little bit of both, huh? Put that down, cool.
morning, day three of practice MFers. Yesterday, just a quick little recap. We uh, we started on the river, found some smaller fish, but I didn't see a whole lot that I liked. And honestly, I didn't give it a very fair shake. People are going to catch them up there, but the bite seems too good down here on the lake to really spend a lot of time on that. So I came back down to the lake. What do you know? Scandal Ledge and the first creek I scanned, I found a freaking wad of them loaded up. And uh, what did I catch, Cole? I don't even remember. Like a three, a four and a half, and like a five ish, five and a half. Mm -hmm. That last one was pretty big that I flipped and dumped back in quick. There's a couple boats around us, but scanned basically the rest of the day for uh, stuff like that and brush piles. My biggest concern with the weather warming and the water warming. Water's like 70 degrees damn near everywhere here, um, is that those are all pre-spawn fish and they're going to leave. But my backup plan for that is uh, shallow brush piles, which I did see some big fish in some shallow brush piles yesterday and had a couple come up and take some swipes and didn't connect. So today, gonna do more of the same. I'm gonna scan a bunch uh, around some of these flats where they can pull up in the shallow brush. I'm going to spend a lot more time looking at docks today too. Um, there's a lot of brush around these docks and that's a place these fish could stage up in that shallow brush. Um, and then I'm going to keep scanning some ledges on some creeks that I haven't uh, scanned yet. Pretty simple to figure out the ledge scanning stuff. I just don't know if they're going to hold up and I don't know how many people are going to be doing that too. So makes it kind of interesting, kind of difficult, but that's the, that's the fun and the challenge of all this. But day three, let's go find some. You hear that noise? <laughs> it's splashing. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just a two pounder though. What's up, dude? Oh, you guys want to eat my bait too out of his mouth? Okay. Nice little keeper spot, nothing big here. Look at that. That's how you want them to be built. Just switched up to a C15 and a see-through color after they wouldn't eat the chartreuse. They liked it.
Jesus. That's not what we're going for. That's a big son bitch. Are you kidding me? That's a little better. Mixed right in with the hybrids. Whew. My God.
Five pounder. This was all hybrids yesterday. Crazy. I'm out of here. A little brush pile fish. That's a little bit more like it, guys. Provoke in his grill. I like this pile. <laughs> We're gonna mark this one. Batty. Close to probably three and three quarter, maybe four pounds. That's the type we're gonna need right there. <sighs> I just don't know how many piles and these things are gonna go around well or get a lot of pressure. Getting a lot of pressure, just, I don't know, let's keep finding more. Ready to get after them? Yeah. Don't stick too many, Brock. It's the last day of practice. Checking them all. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah. What is up, MFers? Welcome back out to beautiful Lake Eufaula. About to dump in this morning, get to fishing, get to scanning more like it. This is the last day of practice, and I only have until 1 o'clock, and then we have registration. We have a virtual pre-tournament meeting, and then tomorrow we get the show on the road. Um, I'm really feeling good about the stuff that I found in this tournament, and so in this video, I'm going to kind of show you exactly on the map what I've found and what I'm talking about because I think it can help you guys go out especially this time of year, pre-spawn phase, spawn, post-spawn, maybe do things a little bit different and catch some different caliber fish than a lot of people, I'm hoping. Honestly, this practice period has kind of progressed and I've found a little bit more and more that's clued me in and I feel like I'm really dialed in. I was worried about the fish sliding up, moving up shallow to spawn. There is some of that going on, but I'm not as worried about it anymore after what I've found. The biggest thing I'm worried about that this tournament pretty much is gonna be determined by for me 
is if I'm able to get on some of these spots because I don't know how many other people found the exact same fish. But I did a bad job of kind of talking about my catches in practice the last few days because a lot of times there was boats around me and I was really trying to conceal my catches and some of them you might see me boat up with a fish and I just kind of walk back to the driver's seat and then you can see me back up fishing because I'm unhooking them underwater, or I'm doing something sneaky, but it's been pretty crazy. Let me show you the type of areas that I've found. And so this is gonna be my main pattern. I've been deep cranking the entire time, um, anywhere from nine to 25 feet of water. It seems like the better fish in two groups that I have are in that deeper range, that 18 to 22 foot range. But as you can probably see on the map here, we've, uh, we've covered some water on Lake Eufaula from one end to the other. I've put like 27 hours on my uh, my engine, my new Camus engine here in the last three days, four days. So it's been a lot of driving, about six hours a day plus of idling and then a little bit of fishing. Some of the spots you need to check to see if they're bass because there is some white, but there's brush piles everywhere too. That's going to be a backup plan for me if I am in an area that's got good brush or if I can't get on one of these spots. But Eufaula kind of sets up like you got this it's, it's obviously a long, narrow fishery. And we got this main river channel that kind of swings around. That might be a type of place in the winter that would be really good. Um, deeper water, of course. I'm sure they get out in the basin some. I'm sure they get in the drains and the creeks some too, obviously. But these fish are all spawning in the backs of these major creeks that come off, uh, or they're going to. I haven't seen any bedfish, but I also can't say much because I haven't looked for them. But we got these major creeks that come off of Lake Eufaula. Even some little sneaky ones like this guy right here. And the biggest thing that I've been looking for is these creeks that really are a defined creek channel edge. And they have all this red or orange or yellow shading, which is shallower water and then the creek channel right up against it. That creates a harder drop off and a place for these fish to really stop and set up. And so what I've found is, so these fish will migrate obviously from their wintering spots and they're either gonna chase bait or they're gonna do whatever. There's gonna be bait fish somewhere that at some point that they like in these spots. So they'll follow this like a highway all the way to the back. This isn't rocket science, but this is one of my best schools right here and they're set up on the top side of this ledge right here. And you can see how it makes a dog leg like that. And so that makes perfect sense. This creek, it's not super straight, but the first spot where it's shallow enough on the edge, like out here, you know, it's, it's not a real defined hard edge. Up here, it's, it's a little bit too deep out here still. The first spot where they can, boom, they're traveling, they're traveling, it turns and they're like, oh, it's shallow enough up here and bait probably flushes down because the current's coming down this way. And this school right here probably has 50 to 70 fish in it. And one cool thing is I've checked it three times. The first time it was bass. The second time there was hybrids. And I was really nervous that they had pushed the bass off because that happens in a lot of places I fish. But they, uh, they can mix in here apparently because I caught three hybrids and then boom, five pound largemouth. And so they were mixed in and then I went back two days ago to check them, made one or I think one cast and I caught like a three and a half pounder. And I was like, okay, done, don't wanna see anybody. And so I've scanned all of these creeks. That's why I'm not on the lake right now because I'm gonna go look for some sneaky stuff in a little bit. Um, but I don't know how much more we can, we can really find, but let's take a look at another creek here. So this is another example, a big major spawning creek. And there's these two flat areas here. We're actually staying right there, but there's two flat areas here where the fish could slide off and there's a lot of brush piles. So they're staging in the brush piles that are just randomly scattered on the flat. You probably can't see the, um, the icon there. That's 0.5 miles for the little scale. So, I mean, from where we're at out to here is about a mile. So it doesn't look very big. It's actually a really big area. But let's look at this again. Once again, these fish can travel all the way up this creek because they want to spawn all back in this area or under the docks in here, but they really like the flats and there's grass on the bank. It's perfect. Here's another school I found yesterday. It's a lot more subtle. I'd be surprised if people find this one. But so they're coming in along here. 
they're coming in along the channel and then you notice right here first place it turns orange because it's shallower the water is orange there that's what that means no that's not what that means at all. <laughs> but that's how i have it shaded the first stopping place right there very very obvious spot and there's fish there and I caught a couple two pounders, but I've been back and scanned it since and it's gotten beat up so much that I think it's spread out. But if you go a little bit further back, yesterday I found this school right here on this little point. So it is harder to see, but we got a drain right here that goes back into the spawning flat. We have this point, and for whatever reason, this point has nothing on it. Maybe these fish will slide over there, or they'll slide here, whatever. But you got this drain right here, but I mean, look at this perfect spot. These fish traveling the corridor right here, this big flat in this area, they wanna spawn up here and they're set up perfectly and there's bait everywhere on this spot right here. And they are just waiting to crush them. Um, this area here was another really obvious one. This is a perfectly defined creek channel that goes in a big flat right here. There's been fish on it. Um, I was telling Cole, there's like two schools of fish and this is one of the spots I've seen so many boats scanning over the top of, right behind me, whatever, going to fish spots after they watch me fish them and they've gotten beat up so bad that that's probably gonna be a no-go. Um, but yeah, I, I've got six schools of fish and there's 230 boats. So a lot of those guys are gonna be up shallow bed fishing. A lot of those guys are gonna be up shallow just doing shallow stuff and a ton of those guys are going to be brush pile fishing. It's just gonna be about, for this one, how many of the guys are gonna be scanning ledges for this type of stuff. Um, these two baits right here are the deal for me so far. The big ones, especially the ones in 14 plus feet of water, six cents, 500 DD. This is the bait for pre-spawn giants that I've found. You guys have seen me catch giants in Texas and now the big ones here are eating it. And these are northern strains with little mouths. They're still getting these hooks. They're, they're gobbling it up. Some of them are like two pound body fish and they're just blimps and they weigh four and a half pounds. They're so thick and they can eat this bait. And even areas that are 12, 14 feet deep, I wanna make bottom contact the whole way. So I make that long cast. I got my, my seven, nine Melican crankbait rod. I sling that thing to the moon and get it as deep as possible for as long as possible. And then some of my shallow spots where they've come up to 10 feet of water or less, I like to throw this bait whenever I can get away with it. This is the C10 series from Six Cents. Something about the C10 is such a productive pre-spawn bait, summer bait too, but especially in the pre-spawn, really sharp diving angle with that wider bill and the little hook there on the lip so it gets down to the, the depths quicker than this um, 500 dd which kind of swims down to depth kind of rolls its way down um, but this is a tighter wobble than the other c series the cloud nine series crankbaits besides the c6 uh, it's a lot tighter than the 15 the 20 and the 25 that size is the size of shad they're eating, they're eating a lot of small shad here uh, and it's a lot more subtle bait i wish i could get this bait down 20 25 feet i'd probably throw it the entire time but this one's the powerhouse. This is kind of a little bit more of a finesse option. And that's what I've been using to uh, catch them. But like I said, we got one more morning here. I'm gonna go get the boat dumped in. I'm gonna look for only sneaky stuff today. Um, like I found a couple spots where there's just a random little point out from the bank, just a undulation and there's fish on that stuff too. Some of those areas have two pounders, uh, caught a three and a half on one yesterday. And so they, uh, they are productive, some of those areas. So. Without further ado, let's get after it. Is the GoPro good? Yeah. Oh, it's going. Never mind.
time do you plan on going to registration? Dude, I don't know. I was going to ask you the same. My wife and son are going to be here in like 10 minutes or less. I don't know if they want to go or not. You got off the water about 105, I saw. <laughs> got to be strategic. They found it. Two, like it's right 37 over minutes. I'll you, man. Okay. Hey, what's up guys? Ben Milliken here from Texas and at Lake Eupala. Totally changing things up. Uh, unless Chris Buzz decides differently, I will be your tournament director for the year and uh, we're happy to have you here. Um, again, preseason meeting. Mm. Oh God, please no. I'm serious. If I freaking set the hook and the first thing and I break my rod, I will lose my mind. I don't come down here. Huh? Look who we got. Tired Tim. Is it past your bedtime? You're not taking a nap today in the car? No. Yeah. Ozzy and Becky and Emmy just showed up 10 hours from home. 10, 10 hours and 40 minutes, actually, to come and watch me do this crazy life. So that's amazing. They're going to be at several of these tournaments, huh? Tomorrow, do you remember what you want to see at the weigh-in? Mm -hmm. What? Fishing. Fishing. And big bass. Yeah. Yeah. Not small ones, right? Had our meeting a little bit ago, and I'm pretty stoked because I found what I think is the two best spots on the lake potentially, but I'm sure 800 people also did. So um, I was hoping to get a good boat number, and I did. And I don't have a co-angler tomorrow, so it's just me. Um, Cole is going to be in the camera boat trailing and giving you guys... All sorts of good content, but the uh, the whole season starts tomorrow. Broccoli back there is going to go blast them. We're going to hopefully blast them. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys have gotten out of what <laughs> we're doing and how we're catching these fish here. That's going to help you go catch some as well. And next video, you finally are going to get to see some damn open tournament fishing. But we will catch you guys first thing in the morning. I think we're planning on Cole is going to film the launch, and then I'm running like 25, 30 miles away. And I don't think we want our camera boat uh, up there and driving 45 minutes, waiting in line forever, and then driving just right back down. So I think he's going to go up there, and then they're going to come back down here and launch the boat closer, and you guys will start getting some footage at that point. Hopefully by the time Cole's in the boat, on my dash cam going, we'll have about, what, 22 pounds or so? <laughs> but... Hopefully we can get on any of our spots. Regardless, we're going to have a hell of a good time. And um, we'll catch you guys on this adventure. Can you say, out of here, peace!